In this video, we are going to look at two different approaches to adding a little bit of a color shift to an otherwise monochrome image. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 88 of Understanding Darktable. Now, First of all, I want to remind you, or if you haven't watched all of the videos in my channel, point you to episode 38. That is where I covered the split toning module. But we're going to have another quick look at it right now. The split toning module can be found over here in the effects uh, collection. And if we turn it on in its default mode, is that its default? Yep, it is. Okay, what it's doing is applying a color shift, in this case red, to our shadows, and it is applying a yellow color shift to our highlights. And we can change whatever color we want the shadows to be, what color we want the highlights to be. We can change the amount of saturation for each of those with the respective saturation control. We can then shift the balance with the balance control towards either the shadows or the highlights. And then we can also change the compression. And just as a reminder, what the compression is doing is defining a range of midtones which are protected from the split toning effect. So by default, it's 33%. So what that means is the middle third of your tonal range is not getting any split toning. The lowest 33 and a third percent is getting the, in this case, red applied to the shadow tones. And your top 33 and a third percent of highlights is getting the, in this case, green applied to those highlights. If we set the compression to say 10%, what we are doing is only protecting the middle 10% of tones of our you know, middle grays. And we're applying 45% split tone to the shadows and 45% split tone to the highlights. Likewise, if we go in the opposite direction, set this to 80% compression, we are essentially protecting the middle 80% of tones, the bottom 10% of shadows gets split toned, and the top 10% of highlights gets split toned, again with whatever colors you've chosen. So that's how the split toning module works. Obviously, if you want the split tone to apply to the entire image, you would simply set the compression to zero. Okay. So that's just a quick recap of how the split toning module works. And I will leave you to explore that at your own will. What I was mucking around with through the last week or so was a module from the color group called Colorize. Now this is a module that I have not up until now done a dedicated video on. And I don't know if I will or if maybe this video just covers that ground. If we turn this module on in its default settings, what it does is convert our entire image, in this case to a red overlay, basically. But what I want you to notice is what happened to the histogram. Up there in the top right hand corner, without the module, we had a fairly well balanced histogram reasonable amount of contrast. It could do with a little bit of black adjustment and it could probably have the highlights pushed a little harder. But essentially the histogram is sitting in the middle where it should be. When we turn the colorize module on, everything gets a lot brighter. Now, what I've been mucking around with in the last week or so is using this colorize module as a, an, an alternate form of a split tone module. And in order to do it, I would start by saying, drop the saturation to zero. That then removes the color separation in our histogram and shows us exactly how much lighter our image now is. I would then 
bring the lightness back until the data in our histogram is sitting roughly in the middle, where it should have been. And in this case, that's meant bringing the lightness back to somewhere around about 22%, give or take. Somewhere between 20 and 25%. It'll probably differ from image to image. So now we're back to having our tonal range sitting in the middle where it was before we turned on the colorized module, but we're lacking contrast. So what we could do is go to our uniform blending mode and look in our blending modes and we can see there is a bunch of contrast enhancing blend modes. Woohoo! So let's start with overlay. That has brought back contrast, but it's actually a little bit too much contrast. If I turn the module off and we compare those two histograms, you can see that's introducing a little bit more contrast than we actually want. If we go to soft light, which is the very next blend mode in the list, and compare that, that's closer to where we started. And I can tell you now, having done some testing before I started recording, that everything else introduces more contrast than we want. Hard light, vivid light, linear light. And for some reason, the pin light blend mode doesn't seem to do anything. Like that's just complete pass through. It's not actually having any impact at all. So we will go with the soft light option because that seems to give us a contrast that's reasonably close to where we started. Now we can introduce some saturation. And this is very much subjective, but for me personally, around about 10% is enough. So 0.1, hit enter. And now I've got the ability to simply change the hue to whatever color I would like to introduce to this otherwise monochrome image. So if I wanted something with a bit of an antique look, I could select something from the browns and oranges. If I wanted a bit of a matrix look, I could go to the greens. If I want something a bit cooler, I can go to the blues. You know, and at any point, if this doesn't work for you, if you want it to have a bit more impact, simply increase your saturation. You want more? Great, have more. Want more matrix? Go more matrix. Want more antique? Go more antique. Hey, look, like I said, I was just playing around over the last week or so, and I really liked the look that I got from this colorized module with a soft light blend mode. You might like it, you might hate it. Hey, like I said, it's all subjective. So anyway, I hope that's been uh, informative in some way, shape or form. Um, yeah, use it as you see fit. Before I go, I do want to mention two things. You probably heard over the last, uh, I don't know, couple of months, lots of hoo-ha about Facebook changing or, or thinking about changing the privacy settings relating to WhatsApp. And as a result, a lot of people decided to dump WhatsApp. And the two main contenders that they were going to go to were either Signal or Telegram. I decided to check out Telegram because I knew a couple of people who were already on it. And what I found was that on Telegram, there's a dark table group. Now it's only a small group, it's only about 100 people in it at the moment, uh, but I've joined the group and I will you know, interact with uh, the conversation that's going on there. So I just thought I'd mention, if you have already joined Telegram, you may not have even thought to look for a dark table group, do so. It's there. Uh, and if you're thinking about getting out of WhatsApp and you can't decide whether you're going to go to Signal or Telegram, I'm just saying, hey, there's a dark table group on Telegram. Might be of interest to you. The other thing that I wanted to mention, uh, and for those who are watching all of my videos in chronological order, you will have seen in the last episode I talked about Affinity Photo, which I re recently purchased. And because I recently purchased it, and because I really haven't done much multi-layered compositing work for, 
I'm probably going to say five or six years now, um, pretty much since I left Windows, you know, because when I was last on Windows full time, I was still paying for Adobe Creative Cloud. So I had Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, and since then, I really haven't done much multi-layered stuff. I've dabbled with GIMP, uh, but because I've recently purchased Affinity Photo, I started watching some photos, started watching some videos on YouTube about Affinity Photo. Stands to reason, right? And one of the videos that I came across, which I will put a link to in the description for this video, was a video that I think the title was something like stop messing up your black and whites and the girl who's doing the video whose voice i find really annoying but anyway um it was a great video and she was basically presenting this idea that it was all about the the channel mixing for converting color to black and white in a way that keeps the relative luminosities in the right balance. And it basically came down to this idea that it should be 30% red, 59% green, and 11% blue. And this is not something I had ever come across anywhere else in my travels around the web, in all of the websites I've ever visited. I'd never come across this idea. But the way in which she presented it, it really kind of made sense. And so what I did was I came back into Darktable and thought to myself, okay, how can I, you know, adopt those percentages in Darktable? And essentially what it came down to was the color calibration module and its gray tab. And so that's what I did. I set up 30% red, 59% green, 11% blue, and I saved it as a preset. And so that's why I have this preset 30, 59, 11. I really like it. Now, again, I will confess, I don't know enough about the color science to say whether that is the most accurate way to create a monochrome mix from a color image. The video that I watched certainly sold me on the legitimacy of it. Uh, but you know, there might be reasons why it's wrong. I don't know, but I have to say, I like the mix that it gives me. So I thought I'd throw that out there as well. Uh, definitely go and have a watch of that video, even if you don't have Affinity Photo. Uh, the science behind why those percentages or how those percentages were arrived at might just resonate with you as well. I don't know. Anyway, um, love to hear your feedback on that. You know, whether you think those percentages are right or wrong and why you have an opinion one way or the other, please sing out in the comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I will catch you in the next one.